Okay, thank you for the opportunity of uh, give this talk on fish, fisheries and food security. Actually, I'm going to speak a little bit about human ecology and fisheries, which is the context, the background of this work on fish and food security. Uh, it's a very brief talk. I'm talking about some background and then some fisheries and the food, the fish diversity, the fish treatment, and uh, finally a project that we have at NEPA that is from FAPESP. I should thank FAPESP for all my 30 years or 25 years of field work on fish and biodiversity and fishers. Uh, going back to human ecology is a multidisciplinary uh, research dealing especially with uh, anthropology, ecology, the basic background is ecology and ecological economics. And we usually have in our context of theoretical part, but also in the field work and in the methods, uh, an interaction with the local people, the fishers. What does it mean that the information fishers have is very important as uh, giving us opportunity indicators for future research and also to complement our data or lack of data on the biology of the Brazilian fish and of coastal and freshwater fish. Uh, but before that, just very brief, you know, what guys, what researchers were important in human ecology for us? All cultural anthropology is very important. Just one example of one of the first studios in, in cultural anthropology, Franz Bowes, and all the field work that was very important, the potlatch, food. What is the potlatch? It's a very huge feast that the Eskimos were, uh, gave at this time, in the old times, and also today they still maintain a potlatch. But what does it mean? Is it an irrational behavior? No, it was, Bo has shown how important it was for uh, uh, bringing down all the communities and also for future alliances to uh, diminish conflicts with this potlatch. And Malinovsky, with all the field work also and local participation and research. And Julian Stewart, with all the cultural core method that, that is so important for human ecology, especially we use a lot on fisheries. But also Marvin Harris, with all the emic and ethic conce concepts. The emic is the insider, the ethic, the outsider, that's it, the researcher, for example and all the importance of the infrastructure structure and superstructure in understanding the relationship of humans and biodiversity. Ecology, this is the basic, the support of all is the study of ecology and evolutionary ecology and some models of optimum forage, let, let's say, how, how long have you, you have to fish to obtain uh, a value food. This is one of the questions of ecology that we use in human ecology. Also, the concept of niche, very important to understand all the relationship of humans and nature. Diversity, biodiversity. We are going to speak a little bit about biodiversity. And finally, uh, more current, the importance of ecological economics and especially the institutional analysis that Ostrom gave us with so many theories and so many uh, field work and indicator, indicators studied that are used as indicators for us, especially when dealing with biodiversity and management and co-management that will be the management between, among communities, government and agencies. Back to Brazil, okay, the examples now I'm going to talk about human ecology of fisheries, but giving, using as an example the work that we are doing in Brazil at the NEPA and at the Fisheries and Food Institute. That is about the Caissaras of the Atlantic Forest Coast and the Caboclos, the river and Caboclos of the Amazon. All of them are small scale fishers. This is this graph, these figures, just to show how important is in Brazil the fish that comes 
from small scale fisheries. You can see in red that more than 50% of all fish come not from industry, big, huge boats, but from the small scales artisanal fisheries. Okay, our fish is very important, and for food, consum consum cons uh, for consumption, to sell in the market. For example, grouper is a very important market fish. Culturally speaking, for medicine, and also they recommend some for illness. Uh, just to give a glance about our field work, this is Bahia, Porto do Sauípe, and Amazon. We are here in the Japura River, Mamirawa Reserve. And some on food taboos, as food taboos are prohibitions. The most famous is, Marvin Harris study, the sacred call in India. But we have, sometimes you don't have taboos. They just like to eat different things for our culture. But we have also fish taboos, and usually uh, they are related with carnivorous fish. That is understandable. Fish that are on the top of the food chain tend to accumulate more toxins. Then food taboos can be explained also through the uh, food chain analysis. But the questions, could we conserve organisms and food that we don't know about? And here is one example. We don't know much about the fish diversity in the Amazon, the, the, the fish uses as food, the food consumed. We can see those red spots are the interviews that we did along more than 20 years in the Amazon. And you can see the more than 70% of the of fish we don't know about. We don't know about its biology, ecology. And even in the Atlantic Forest Coast, in the coast, OK, oh, so common fish, grouper, and uh, uh, other fish like snappers, and we also don't know, or they are threatened. They have the population decreasing, overexploited, and that needs attention. Here is the grouper. We all have a grouper in our 100 bill. Uh, and then we can see that it should be important, at least for the government. But in practice, what we see, it's a, a huge uh, problem in the population and in the control and the management of all those fish, and including grouper. We don't know much about the diet of grouper. This is one of our fast, fast best projects that we studied a little bit. We don't know about the reproduction. And even, fish, even the fishers, they know a bit, but they don't know much about reproduction. And to manage the populations, we need to know when they reproduce. At least that information will be very important. Uh, going back to human ecology, I like to just stress the point that our work in human ecology is really integrated with Scientific knowledge is a dialogue among the scientific, uh, between the scientific knowledge and the local knowledge. We exchange information with fishers in order to, to really run, you know, after the, the knowledge that we don't have and that we need. Then local knowledge is a specific and special topics in human ecology it that links information towards acquiring some indicators for managing the fish populations and the fisheries. Uh, this, I just would like to, you know, finally uh, end this small talk with the, our project in ecology and ethnoecology of groupers, in Portuguese, garupa, garupa comum. This is our project. The, the main point is that we don't have knowledge on grouper, but we would like to just get the knowledge from the genetics for, of grouper to the market. And then we de developed some collaborations for larva, for example, with Branco Glamuzina from uh, Dubrovnik, Croatia. And genetics, that would be before, with Regina Prioli. She is now a volunteer at NEPA, and she's doing the genetics. And we are doing all the part of landings of groupers in many different sites of Brazil on the coast. 
also at NEPA, uh, Professor Cristianini and its leading a project concerning the market of, especially the, the meat of the grouper. And then we are doing some, they are doing some experiences, some in the lab concerning thinking about the market. Uh, and we have another collaborator that is very important, very interesting, because history can give us clues concerning how populations were in the past. And then we have this collaborator at the University of Nice, France, uh, Paolo Guidetti, an Italian, and he, is, um, he published, he analyzed it more than 70 mosaics, and we can see in the figure there a picture of a huge grouper eating a new man. Then, through this historical side, they are also thinking that maybe some fish populations had uh, uh, higher schools, they were uh, bigger in terms of the schools, but also in term, maybe in terms of their size. Because we know that fish, as soon as you get the bigger fish from the population, you tend to reduce the size of the population. Then it's, it makes sense. Um, we, did, we had some, an earlier uh, FAPES Pitematico on Parachi, also five year project with another also with Canada. But at that time, Regina Prioli, uh, she was leading this uh, results on groupers genetics. And here we have the results of the population of Rio and Parachi showing different populations of groupers. Then this was our preliminary study on grouper and we continue now with that. And finally, uh, again, I really we are entering not just with group it, but all this historical part and art, it's complementing some data on other species. Then we have this field also of art, fisheries and ethnobiology that is amazing, it's very interesting. Then I am with, working with Rodrigo Caires, he's a taxonomist, and then we are discussing all the fish that is painted and the association of these paintings with the abundance and the use of this fish in each of the locality. For example, um, a painter from Holland tend to paint codfish. And usually we can observe this repetition because codfish was important in the Netherlands at that time and so on. Finally, and just concluding, then the main points here is that uh, it's very important for us this link of among the disciplines, uh, because when we think about fish and food security, we are thinking about human relationships and also biological relationships and genetic information and so many information that goes in the context of fish, fishers, and food. Thank you very much. Just to show you some uh, figures of other threatened fish in the coast, you probably know these names in Portuguese. Garopa, Cherne, and Badejo. And this is the site of the UEC and Red List, and usually they update the site, and you can get all the information about the current situation of these fish populations. Thank you very much.